Welcome to Arts and Humanities Are Central. I'm Margie Morgan, Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities, and your host for this exploration of the important role that the arts and humanities play in our everyday lives. My guests today are Michael Ogden, Professor of Communication and Director of our Film and Video Studies program, and two majors in the program, Caitlin Larson and Zachary Bennett. Welcome to Arts and Humanities Are Central. Thank you for being with us. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's start with some information about each of you as film artists. And Michael, let's start with you. Um, what are your areas of specialty in film studies and what courses do you teach at Central? Um, my primary background is in documentary production, although I've done a lot of work in uh, both uh, television and film. Uh, uh, most of the courses that I do teach tend to, central, uh, to, to centralize around uh, directing, production management, uh, studio uh, production. Uh -huh. Do you have a favorite course to teach? Well, actually, I think directing is one of my favorite courses to teach, but um, one of the courses that I'm most passionate about students learning is production management. It isn't taught in most uh, film programs at the undergraduate level, uh -huh. and it's probably the most important course because it teaches the business of film. Uh, and how many students would be in a course that, like that? Uh, that course usually has about 20 students uh, to 25 students uh, in the winter quarter. We offer it once a year. Great, good. And Caitlin, uh, why did you come to, uh, to Central and what, what are your career plans? Uh, I actually came to Central as sort of a last minute decision, but it turned out to be the best decision. Um, I met with Dr. Ogden the summer before I came here as a freshman and he showed me like he showed me the studio mm -hmm. down here and he mm -hmm. showed me um, the cameras are using the equipment and everything and I was really interested and knew all the equipment already that he was talking about so I don't know in, com in comparison to other schools our program was more focused on film and the others were more focused on news related stuff right because you're a film production yeah. major you're in the yeah right yeah and the, what your career plans or what we um, I, one day I'm hoping to direct, but right now I think I'm going to look for production manager jobs because mm -hmm. um, I've done that already for an independent filmmaker and it was pretty okay. And um, might actually try and work for the news because we, we do, um, as part of applied video production, we do news broadcasts with um, Newswatch. Mm -hmm. So I have a pretty good understanding of how like filming the news works. Great, so, great. Yeah. And, and Zachary, how about you? why did you come to Central and what are your career plans? I came to Central in the pursuit of uh, studying film. Uh -huh. I didn't. I knew that this was a, a new program. A friend of mine was going to school here, and she introduced me to the program. And I was like, okay, well, I'll check it out. And like Caitlin said, for me, the same. It, it ended up being like the best decision that I had made uh, for my school path, my path for school. Uh -huh. um, my ultimate goal would be to direct uh -huh. um, feature films, but I'm also leaning towards stunt work. Uh -oh. uh, that's a new thing mm. for me. <laughs> and that's, uh, I, I was doing um, some stunt work on a couple of projects and whatnot, and I, I love it. It's so much fun. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm kind of tossing up in, in the middle right now. But my main, main goal is directing, so. You mentioned that the, the program is new. Michael, let me ask you a few questions about the program. Sure. Uh, how old is the program? Well, uh, officially the program's almost five years old. But uh, unofficially, it's existed longer than that. It started as an independent studies program. Uh -huh. uh, students who were coming here who uh, wanted to get involved in uh, doing more narrative film type productions rather than uh, news documentary type productions. And uh, ostensibly, that's the reason why I was hired when I came here in 2000 was to help build a program like this. So it took a few years of testing it out under independent study before the then vice president for undergraduate studies said it's time for it to be a major. Great. And, and is it popular? Is it popular now? Oh, it's a very popular major. Uh, we started out with uh, 13 students our first year, and we now have 70 students. Wow. And we've graduated uh, almost 40 students uh, th so far. We'll be graduating our largest block this year of uh, almost 25 students. Terrific. That's wonderful. Now, as I understand it, this is an interdisciplinary program mm -hmm. with several different tracks. Is that correct? Could you explain that? Yeah, certainly. Um, uh, as an interdisciplinary program, we draw courses from eight different uh, departments across two colleges. But the anchor uh, departments are the communication department, the English department, okay. and the theater department. Uh -huh. They provide the most courses for us. Uh -huh. And uh, the specializations that exist within the major are in critical studies, which is the, uh, the study of the, uh, the history, uh, 
theory and criticism involving in fi uh, film. Right. Then we have the production major, which uh, are the two student representatives here are, are currently pursuing. Right. And we'll be introducing in uh, the fall a new specialization in screenwriting. Right. Common to all three is a core that all of the students take, right. regardless of what specialization they pursue. Right. So they get to know each other uh, quite well in, in uh, the core courses. Now, both of you are production. You're in the production uh, uh, track, is, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what has uh, been the most uh, rewarding part of the program for you? Uh, I think it's the very, the, the hands-on approach that we get to everything that we do. Um, we don't sit in a classroom. We do have classes, obviously, and lectures and stuff that we go right. to. But we have, um, a lot of our assignments are not papers assignment. They're like projects. We have to go out and film something. Um, for applied video, like I was saying, we actually we run the studio, and Newswatch will create the news broadcast, but we'll actually do all the crew work for it. We'll film it. We'll live edit it. Um, so you're really learning by doing. This exactly. Is experiential learning at its best. Yeah, rather yeah. than just sitting in a classroom and reading books and uh -huh. stuff about uh -huh. it. Uh, Zachary, you too? Yeah, the hands-on work is the ultimate, ultimate thing. And then the best, another after that is like the the camaraderie between people that you start to work with and start to get familiar with. So the the community that the, of the program is together. Like everybody knows each other. Everybody uh -huh. knows each other's strengths, right. and it works out really well. And then you, when you do a project, you know I want to go to this person, and they are strong in that area, and they help you out, and it works really well. Because I would imagine uh, film work is very uh, just teamwork. Right? Oh yes. You're, you're oh yes. It's, it's part of a <laughs> yeah. team, not just not, not just on your own. Yeah. If you try and do it by yourself, you'll probably go crazy. <laughs> way too much to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, let's talk about your uh, most recent project, uh, which is a documentary, right? Yes. The Weenas Mammoth Project. Yes. Uh, what is that project about? Um, that it's it's a project that happened by accident. Uh huh. Uh, literally, uh, a gentleman in uh, the Weenas Valley, just outside of uh, Sela, Washington was putting a road through for uh, the house, uh, the, to situate the home of the daughter of the ranch owner, and they unearthed a very large bone. And at first they thought it was a dinosaur bone. Mm -hmm. So they called up uh, some people at the university here uh, that they knew, and uh, they went and took a look at it and said, no, this isn't a dinosaur bone, this is like uh, one of the, the Pleistocene mega beasts, like a mammoth or something like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, at the time, I was teaching a course in documentary production. Mm -hmm. And uh, Morris Ubelacher contacted me and asked if our class would be interested in working on a documentary about this find. Wow. So I completely restructured the nature of the course in order to take <laughs> advantage of this. I yes. mean, it's not yeah. often that you have something right. like that happen. Find a mammoth bone. <laughs> yeah, it was quite exciting. And so for the rest of that spring quarter and all of the next summer, uh, the students worked on this. And the students that were in the documentary class then took internship in the summer in order to stay with the project through uh, the, the summer of the excavation. So how many bones have been found? There's more bones now, right? There's, there, have, there have been the discovery of multiple bones. Uh, not only are they finding, or did they find more mammoth remains, uh -huh. several of the humeri, uh, the scapula, some rib bones, some toe bones, uh, and bits and pieces of bones that were kind of hard to identify. But they also identified what appear to be uh, Pleistocene bison. So a very large buffalo-like character uh, intermingled with these bones, and uh, that's raised some other questions and issues about it. Uh, those bones were discovered after the documentary uh, was produced, yeah. but uh, is there anything unique or special about this find? Yes, there is. Uh, the interesting thing about this particular find is that it is at an altitude too high to have been deposited by the Missoula floods. Otherwise, the Missoula floods need to be rewritten as much more extensive than science currently shows them as being. You know so the likelihood, based upon uh, the work that the scientific team has done, is that the mammoth died in situ. This is where the mammoth died. Where the bones were found, that's where it died. So it's a local mammoth. 
And is your film in any uh, festivals, the, the, the documentary film in any festivals? Yes, it's been entered into several festivals and uh, it is a feature film at the Archaeology uh, Channel's International Film Festival uh, coming up in a few weeks. And um, I'm waiting to hear back on a couple of others and uh, KCTS would like to take a look at it for possible uh, broadcast as a, as a local uh, uh, piece. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of exciting. That, that's very exciting. I think it's up higher than we think, and I think most of it's gone. Well. That's my gut feeling. We're hoping that this, I mean, my, my dream, of course, would be to say, I think you should dig here and have the students go out, excavate it, and find bones exactly where I dig. Now, in reality, it might not work out. You know, science is never quite that pretty. I'm trickling this man, but there's a lot of weakness. Uh, speaking of exciting, one of the things that, that I find uh, truly amazing and exciting about the film program is the 48-hour film slam <laughs> that I've now, I think I've attended three of these. Um, I, I am in awe of what uh, the students do in the slam. As I understand it, teams of students have to produce uh, a short film from start to finish between 5 o'clock on a Friday and 5 o'clock on a Sunday. So they've got 48 hours. Is that, is, is that how it works? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, you do some initial pre-planning um, to sort of get yourself prepared, like finding people who are available that weekend. Uh -huh. um, you usually can find actors ahead of time, too. Like so, so you actors. do your casting before Friday at 5? Right? Yeah, basically okay. it's not so much casting since you don't have a genre or anything yet. Uh -huh. You don't have the, the guidelines. Right. It's more just, hey, are you going to be around this weekend and free? I see. If so, you should be in our movie that we're making. So guidelines. Michael, uh, what are these guidelines? There's some guidelines that hold these films together. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is that? What, what are the guidelines? Right. Uh, the, the guidelines for the 48-hour film slam are that um, they have to incorporate the theme of the, uh, the slam. That's usually contained on the poster as a line of dialogue. Okay. So the first one was, um, if you can't stand the heat, and then we had, who are those guys? And this year it was beauty that killed the beast. Okay, and so there's a phrase. So the phrase has to become a piece of the dialogue. Right. Then uh, each of the teams draws a genre out of a hat. Okay. And that's the genre that their they film to has do. to be conformed to. Okay. Then we draw a character, uh, an occupation, and a prop. And after that, those things have to be featured in the film. In the film, right. After those are drawn, the students are turned loose to their write their scripts hours. and do their stuff. So, Caitlin, what, you were part of a team this mm -hmm. uh, year in the Film Slam. Uh, yeah. What was your film? What were your five <laughs> things that you had to... Our film was The Calamity of Captain Stryker. <laughs> we drew a superhero film, which we were really excited about because we were just a giant group of nerds. So it really worked out for <laughs> How us. How many nerds were you? Uh, five, five nerds. <laughs> five nerds, okay. <laughs> and um, we also drew, it was a rake and... The, that was your prop? That was the prop. And then, I forget the occupation, it was... Store clerk. Store clerk, right. Store clerk was the occupation. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so superhero, rake, store clerk, and then yeah, it was I'm Beauty that Killed the Beast. And, and so everybody has to have that. Oh, and Cassandra. Yeah. We had to have a, a person named Cassandra. Ca character named Cassandra. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's was, that was ours. So you draw all this, you've got people who can be in your film, it's 5 o'clock on Friday, how does it start? What, what do you do first? Uh, we, we started by sitting down and hammering out first first what story ideas we didn't want to do and then um, what stories, story ideas we did want to do. Okay. And we spent a lot of time researching, like, we, we would Google for different weird type of superpowers because we wanted our superhero to be kind of quirky and not usual Superman or Batman type superhero. Uh -huh. um, and then we settled on an idea, quickly powered through a script, and then started planning out our next day to shoot and stuff. And you shoot, obviously you don't have time to go anywhere, you're shooting right around here. Yeah, exactly. We shot um, in the comic book shop and then out on the main walkway by um, the old dining hall. Right. And then um, we also shot inside um, Bouillon in one of the classrooms. We just cleared out all the tables and used a blank there. Do you sleep? No, 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 no sleep. <laughs> some, okay. some people do. Sometimes the actors get to sleep because they're not there for the post-production, right. but right I was you. there for production, pre-production, production, and then I had to edit it. So, you so I, I didn't sleep at all. 
No! Why, God? Why? Why could it have been me, God? Why? No! No! You know they say immortality is a gift, but all I get out of it is an eternity of regret. But how did you manage to capture Lieutenant Electricity? Uh, come again? Cassandra brings up a good point. We are still very unclear about how he was eventually apprehended. Well, in that storm of chaos, I was drowning in waves of woe. I can only assume that my noble protege apprehended the fiend while I attended to my wound and compadre. Thank you, Captain Stryker. If you'll please stand, we have another witness to question. Another witness? Yes. Since there were so few witnesses at this incident, we decided to bring in Lieutenant Electricity to gain a better perspective on the whole thing. Well, all right. If you want to trust the poison of that thing. You know, he stole my emblem, right? The lightning bolt? Yeah, he's a thief. Outright. Zach, does this uh, sound familiar? Oh, oh yes. 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 Well, well, tell us about your film. And, uh... um, mine was called The, the Rakist. And the Rakist. The Rakist. Yeah, it's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, again, we have the same uh, uh, same aspects that we had the rake, we had Cassandra, we had um, the sword clerk, but my genre was horror. And to be honest, it, when I pulled that, it really scared me. I was like, I don't know how to do this. But uh, luckily, my team came together. We came up with so many weird, I mean, far out there. You have yes, to. Yes, I remember. It, yes, <laughs> they they were really weird. They're very weird ideas that we piled through. I mean, we drove like until like. Two, three o'clock in the morning, and got it set. Okay, this is our script. This is what we're gonna do. And then we jumped out an hour later, out in the four degree weather. And four, four degrees? You're four filming degrees. in four degrees? Oh yes. Oh and my gosh. Yeah. Everybody was sitting in chairs. <laughs> That's right. And this the, is in February, is that right? Oh yes. <laughs> Snow was on the ground. I I had two fires going to keep everybody. One fire to keep people warm. The other fire to keep the equipment warm because we didn't want to freeze up. And it was a lot of fun, but oh my goodness, it was cold. I'm just in awe of this, that you can do all of this in just 48 hours. Then there's a big screening of all mm -hmm. the films mm -hmm. and awards. And did, did your films get awards? Yeah, we, uh, we won Best Ensemble Cast for ours. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we were in Best Directing and then Best of Festival. Best of Festival. Well, congratulations. I remember, I remember the films. And uh, I, as I say, I, you know, uh, I'm an historian. I, I'm a muller. I like to take a lot of time to think about what, what I'm doing mm -hmm. and the idea that I would have to go into action like that so <laughs> fast and forty only a limited amount of time, it's, uh, it's sort of an extreme example of taking an exam, I, I suppose. Speaking of mm -hmm. exams, you know, um, I, I think about final exams, you know, when I, uh, as an historian, as a student, uh, my exams were four hours long and I just sat in a seat and wrote for f furiously for four hours, sometimes on just one question. Um, what's a final exam like for film and video studies students, sen senior level students? It's nothing like that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, we, I think the biggest essay I've ever written for a final, final was like four pages. So, so first of all, we don't, we don't really do essays. So what do you do? We do um, productions. Um, for our, we're both in documentary production right now, and for our final project, we have to go um, interview a random person from a phone book and make a documentary about them and it'll be screened at the end of the, end of the year. That's your final? That's, our, That's final. our final. Yeah, it has to be like four to eight minutes long, I think. Y yeah. You have the same thing? Oh yes, yeah. and it's very daunting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so um, the final exam session is, are you watching everybody's productions? Is that what, you're showing your production? Is that what? Yeah, uh -huh. um, it'll, the project will be like our final grade. It I think it's like, 50% of our grades. Yeah, a big it's a big, chunk. big chunk. Um, right. And then the viewing is just an additional part of the project. Uh -huh. So the project itself is our is our final. Um, right. The viewing is just kind of a fun thing to do after we're done. 
a fun thing to do. I mean, what's it like to watch your own work? I, I can't stand to listen to my voice on the television <laughs> or the answering machine. I, I can't even stand it. Uh, so how is it to, to, to sort of watch your own work? Uh, I think you pick out a lot of flaws. Like you, you finish it and you think it's done and it looks good and then when you finally watch it again, after watching it and saying, oh yeah, it's done, it's fine. You realize all these little things that you missed. Right, right. You're like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't cut the audio at the end there. Oh dang, that cut was not good. And yeah, I think that's the hardest thing. But can you so go critical. back and change? Uh, sometimes for projects, not really. No, Usually, right. when you right. hand it in, that's right. It. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, if it's a personal project and you show it to people, you can probably take it back and edit it a little bit. Do you like to watch your own work? I I do, but I I am my biggest critic uh -huh. so well, like she was good. saying I stare at it and it's like oh start cringing that's like, what I mean and nobody hard. else would notice but I would right, because right. Right. I was like I made it it's it's fun to watch it and see people's reactions but also it's just kind of like it's frightening sometimes I have to stand in the back of the room and be like oh no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. too Michael yeah. uh, I am absolutely terrified by public screenings <laughs> oh t ah, true confessions here yeah it's it's absolutely the truth I am terrified that they won't like it yeah well you know you um. I think about I was saying this to the art students the other day too at the award ceremony again unlike a discipline like mine you really put your work out there in the public I mean I think it takes a lot of guts mm-hmm yeah. It's, it's difficult in some respects because it's hard for us to separate ego from product. Well, so much of ourselves is tied up in this. We put so much of our effort, so much of our, our creativity into producing this piece uh -huh. and then to put it out in front of the audience right. and have it potentially be rejected is very daunting. Nothing is more exhilarating than at the end of which Everybody applauds and people tell you right. how good how it good is. It is right. And suddenly you realize, you like me, you really like <laughs> me. Uh, you know, uh, but it, it's, it is a little, it's scary. A little sure. scary. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's shift gears away from scariness for, for a minute and talk about something <laughs> I hope positive. Uh, what kind of jobs do film and video studies graduates get? Um, at the moment, um, I'm looking to hopefully, I, get an, I got an internship coming up this summer with Screaming Flea Productions, uh -huh. and I'm hoping to get a, a job with them after that internship ends. And what kind of work would you do? Um, but just basic work because I'm fresh out of college. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get on productions, be actually be on productions and learn from everybody that is working there, right. doing certain jobs like production assistant, working my way up and whatnot. Just basically whatever they need me to do at the time and then just soak up all the information that I can get, ask everybody every question okay. that I can think of just so I can learn from actual real life experience. Sure, sure. But, but I would think that film and video study students are learning some of the most in-demand skills mm -hmm. in our society. I know on campus here that the students are constantly being asked to produce promo videos and you know every organization, every society, every business, they need promo materials. It seems like that even if you don't go into film production, there's a wealth of jobs. Is that is that true? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, just from being here on campus, I've done a number of promotional type videos. I had an, an internship turned practicum uh, last year where I was filming the fashion show, and it was this big production on campus. Mm -hmm. um, we had a five camera shoot, four cameras set up, and then a roaming camera. And we used a truck, so we were live editing and everything. So it was, it was. A promotional video for them, but also for us, it was a way to sort of push ourselves to do something we hadn't done before. And now all of us in that production know how to run a truck shoot, right? Which is important. Michael, what kind of skills are, are, are you, do you think your your students are learning that that transfer to lots of different parts of the workplace? Certainly, um, the um, the most typical entry level position for someone coming out of a program like this is a production assistant, and you know. We, we try very hard not to fool the students into thinking it's anything other than an entry level position. But they have a great skill set. And in fact, uh, the New York Times, I think, uh, I think it was 2007, published an article on Is Cinema Studies the New MBA? And one of the things that they outlined in there uh, is very accurate. Students coming out of a film program like ours have team skills. They know how to be a part of a team working towards a common project, bringing their A game, doing their best every day. Mm -hmm. 
They also learn leadership skills because these students are going to have to spend some time in the director's hot chair. There's no way they can get out of that. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. they also learn how to channel their creativity towards a productive end. Uh, writing skills are critical in this major and they have to hone those writing skills. Likewise, they learn how to manage a team, manage people to get everybody moving towards the same common goal to realize a project on time. Right. And if we had money, on budget. Right. Uh, but <laughs> students are working with uh, budgets of zero, so right. that's, well, that's uh, a good skill too. Yeah, that is. <laughs> increasingly and important. If you think about it, these are the same skill sets that almost every business is looking for with right. the added benefit of media literacy. These students know how to use the technology to communicate a mediated technology message. Technology like these cameras here. Like the cameras that you see here. Are uh, these state-of-the-art cameras that were? These are. These are cutting-edge cameras. Uh, this smaller camera records to uh, the SD cards. And this is, this is recording probably in the neighborhood of, oh, I would say uh, 80 minutes of footage. Wow. You can record on one of these. And they learn how to edit that footage. Uh, into a coherent message. This one over here is the exact same camera that was used to film the Iditarod. It's not the same physical camera, but the same <laughs> model. Uh -huh. This is the kind of equipment that we put in the hands of the students because this is often the kind of equipment that if they were to go out and work in the independent film industry, that they will be working with. It's great that this they have that experience as students. Yeah. That's what you were saying, the hands-on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, this has been very uh, uh, enlightening to me about, about your program. Thank you very much. I think we're out of time. I really appreciate you being with us. And thank you for tuning in. See you next time on Arts and Humanities Are Central.